listed in my bio. This is <laughs> um, I am so incredibly honored to be able to be here with you all just to share a little bit of my story and my journey. And I love that the topic today is trust. Because this is something that I grapple with and wrestle with and think about all the time. You know, trust is one of those things. It's, it's sincerity plus confidence. And I think about how much you're willing to do something and your ability to actually do it is how you engender trust. And I think it's hard for you to trust people sometimes because mostly you're not trusting yourself. And I really want to talk about my journey of trusting myself and hopefully give you some hope and some thoughts to ask yourself, questions to ask yourself as you go through your own trust journey. So uh, I just want to shout out that picture is me and my baby who graduated three months ago from Cleveland State University. Yeah. And they, they have, uh, these So this is one quick little mothering bragging moment. Um, Audie has always been an incredible student. Audie is valedictorian of high school when 2020 hit and they, nobody could have a graduation. So we had to have a graduation on YouTube. So I was kind of sad about that. But four months prior to Audie graduating college, I'm um, sorry, graduating high school, Audie graduated with an associate's degree from Columbus State because they did the college credit plus program. Um, Magna cum laude, by the way. Yes. <laughs> And then because they worked so hard, they were able to get a full ride academic scholarship to Cleveland State. So then graduated summa cum laude and debt free. Can we talk about that? So I'm a super proud mama about that. And, and when you start talking about trust and I talk about manifestation, when Audrey was walking to kindergarten and I saw them walking to kindergarten, I said, my child's going to be in the class of 2020. Audrey's going to be valedictorian. I can see them thinking, 2020 is hindsight, but now it's the future, because that's where we're going to the future. And I started falling. <laughs> and kindergarten. But then it manifested, it became more than anything I could have ever hoped for or imagined. And this, this kiddo gives me so much life. And so I'm so proud that I get to share this moment with them. So, so we're going to talk about trust in three ways. Uh, the first one is trust your mind, and about trust your heart, and then trust your voice. So trusting your mind, that's baby law on the right. Me and my, my sister, Audra, but my sister is about two years and four months older than me. Um, but I was always her baby. She always said that when I was born, she was so excited to have a little sister. And my mom always tells the story that I was laying on the couch um, in the living room and the sun started peeking through the window and it started washing over me. And Audrey was like, Audrey was like, I can't have my baby in the sun. So Audrey had a two-year-old came and lifted me up and moved me to the other side of the couch. And she's been taking care of me ever since. But you know, as a kid, I was always a very, I guess the word we call precocious, what people call me. A little bit sassy, a little bit insolent um, to say, but I I was very intelligent, but I had a hard time following rules. Anybody else so a rule breaker here? Thank you very much, all of the rule breakers. But it was funny because I was always curious too, and I asked a lot of questions. But back in the day when you were a child, you were always told you're not supposed to question adults. And so I constantly had a lot of questions, and my curiosity often got me in trouble. Um, even there's two instances I remember very clearly in kindergarten. We were lining up to go to lunch, and the teacher specifically said, don't touch the wall. So what did Law do? <laughs> All the way down the hall, right? And just that simple act of defiance landed me in the bad kids' table. So I had to sit at the bad kids' table in the lunchroom, and this was literally the table in the middle of the lunchroom where your friends and people can look at you and point at you and, and basically shame you. And so for my curiosity, that simple defiance put me in a position that I was punished. So I started thinking, well, if my mind tells me to do things and I get in trouble, I must have a bad mind. And I thought about that all the time. And what ended up happening now as an adult, I realized I had ADHD and I had a hard time focusing and being a part of those work. But the problem is no one knew that and we didn't diagnose it. So every time I did something that was neurodivergent, I got in trouble. So it was really hard for me to learn how to trust my mind. Am I thinking the right way? Am I doing things the right way? Um, and even when I became an adult and worked in corporate spaces, I was often shunned and punished as well because I still continued to question. 
um, an authority, and in some cases, it was career-limiting moves for me, and people blocked me from being able to actually grow up into different positions, and so what I ended up having to do, because that's what you do, I started my own damn business. So I can do what I want to do the way I want to do it. And I've been able to go out and I get to talk to people now and I get to tell them that neurodivergence is a gift, it's my superpower. Now, I don't have to be punished and relegated to the bad kids table. I get to speak my truth and I get to help others feel valued and protected and special in that space. And I have co-workers and friends and a lot of you who are in this room who have believed in me and given me opportunities to shine. And now I am. I feel like I'm thriving and living the best part of my life. And now I trust my mind because my mind tells me now I don't have to settle for the status quo. I can actually make change and I can contribute and I can challenge people to be even better than they ever think they can be. So I like to be a mirror for people that they can see themselves more than they can see for themselves. So I try to help them get out of that space. And so it has been such a rewarding place for me. And because of people like you and this community that embraces me so much, I feel and I see the value that I have. And so I want to encourage you to ask the question, how are you showing back up and reclaiming your time, honey? Thank you, Sister Maxine. I'm reclaiming my time. I'm reclaiming my mind that I can think these thoughts. I can be intelligent and I can be curious. And it does not have to lend me in the bad kids table, even though sometimes it's fun, though, y'all, you know, to be over there in the bad kids. I go lie. Sometimes I have a good time in the bad kids table because we just because we do what we want to do, right? We make the things. But I want you to think about who is in your life right now that gives you value? Who tells you that you are unique and special and wonderful and could do all the things? Because those are the right people in your life. Because I always tell people, I said, you know, there's always going to be people who love you and there's always people who can't stand you. Don't change for either group, right? you got to be yourself. And for those who want to be with you, they will find you. And those who don't, that's cool. One less Christmas present to buy. Keep it moving. <laughs> Keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. So when I think about how much love that I received from this community, it made me start thinking about how was I trusting my heart. When I was a little girl, I was a, a, a larger girl like I am, and I love being a large girl with lots of curves. But I was told I was fat. I got called all kinds of names. If you are a person of age, remember a show called The Dukes of Hazard. There was a guy on there called Boss Hog. I got called Boss Hog. I got called Porky Pig. I got called all these things. And I, you know, my little chubby cheeks were sweet because they kept my, my smile because I love my smile. I still love my smile. But the pictures on the side were me in, in high school. And I ain't fat, y'all, but that's okay. I look at those pictures and I think about who I was. And oftentimes I did not get asked on dates. Um, when I was with people, it was I was the third wheel or the fifth wheel. Um, I was funny and people liked hanging out with me, but no one took me seriously as a romantic prospect. And so that gave me a feeling that my heart wasn't worth loving. And I struggled so much in loving myself and who I was and in my size. And the thing that I always thought I said, maybe I'm destined to be alone. Maybe I'm not supposed to have somebody to love me. Um, but then I met my husband. And that dude is the truth. That's us in our wedding. My husband, Brian, is my rock. We've been together for 16 years. He was honestly the first person who looked at me, size, shape, hair, all the things and said, you are the most beautiful, amazing, special person I've ever met in my life. And I couldn't imagine my life without you. And he showed me things about myself that I didn't even know I could be loved for. And he loved me through my ADHD and all of my mood swings and everything else. And he actually did a lot of research on his own and know how he could support me. And him doing that work made me know that I am lovable, that I can be loved. And I have somebody that really has my back at any given time when I need it. And Brian, whew, this is going to be a hard part. Brian would be here today but he is going through cancer treatment right now. And this is our fourth time battling this ugly, ugly, horrible disease. And it, through it all, we have found new love and appreciation for one another. And I couldn't imagine going through this life without him. And so I told him, I'm too stubborn to let you go. So we are gonna fight this doggone thing and we are gonna keep it moving. And I know for a fact that with all the love that I constantly receive from this community, I know we can do it. 
So I appreciate all of you who give me warm energy or prayers or anything that you send up uh, to the heavens or the above for me because we need that in my family. And my family means so much to me and I could not imagine my life without them. And this is that Motley crew. It's me and my husband, uh, my mom and my sister who are so important to us. And the middle picture is our kids, uh, Aji and Jason and Jason's partner, Daniel. And we have so much fun together. We love each other. We learn together. We grow together. Uh, we wrestle with all the challenges of life together. I remember doing a six word memoir one time with my friend Larry. And my six words was life brings balances, well, balances blessings and um, barriers simultaneously. Because sometimes there's blessings that happen in your life that happen and they're beautiful, but then there's barriers that get in your way as well. And you have to overcome both of them. You have to work to be your best for both of them. And I know that I only am able to do that when I'm surrounded by the most beautiful people. And that is all of you. Creative Mornings has been such a part of my life for a very long time. And as Brandy said, we are a team, we are a family, we're a unit. And I have never felt so accepted in my entire life than being here. And the fact that all of you are spending your time with me 8.30 and 9 o'clock on a Friday morning, you could be anywhere and you're here with me. So that gives me the to trust in myself to know that my heart can 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 afford to have more people in it because you all are in it right now. And I thank you for that. And it's helping me continue to build that trust so that when I tell people I love them, I am dead serious when I say that. And I love you because I want to see you succeed. I don't want to see harm come your way. And when you can truly love somebody in that space, then that is doing something pretty doggone good for the world. So thank you for allowing me to trust my heart enough to bring you all into this space with me and to share a little bit of who I am. And as my girl RuPaul says, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen? <laughs> listen, when Mama Ru talks, you listen. So I want to talk about trusting your voice. Um, I grew up, as I was taught and telling you low about in the South, right? So that's little law out in the yard, doing things in the truck, me and my sister. My sister was a Girl Scout, and I just wanted, never was a Girl Scout, but I wanted to go with her everywhere she went. And I used to yell and run around the yard because you could hear echo where I grew up in my hometown. So I was as loud as loud can be because I wanted to hear my echo. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Do it, do it, do it. So I just loved doing it so much that I became just naturally loud. So this is my inside voice, y'all. So I don't know how <laughs> not to be this way. But what I found as I was coming through the corporate space, my voice was something that actually, again, got me in trouble. People would often say, use your inside voice. Oh, my God, you're so loud. And at first, I always took offense to it, right? Because then people would always never say the beautiful things that I would do for people. They would always just say, I'm so loud. And it started really getting to me to a point where I just wanted to shut down and not use my voice at all. And there was a time when I had a big event that I was supposed to uh, facilitate and somebody said, well, she's not professional enough to do this. And I don't we, I don't think her voice is the right voice for this room. And I'll tell you, Michelle, which is why I wanted her to do the manifesto today. We were at an event and I didn't even know she was in the room, but she heard my voice and she was trying to find me and we didn't, we didn't see each other that night. And the next time we came to Creative Morning, she came to me. She goes, were you at the Drexel the other night? And I said, yeah, I was. She's like, I thought that was your voice. And I turned to my friend. And I said, that sounds like Law's voice. And she said, well, when I hear Law's voice, I really feel like I'm at home. She doesn't know what she did for me that day. She validated that my voice mattered, that my voice was something that needed to be heard and that people could feel good and feel important and feel valued just by hearing my voice. And it is something that still means so incredibly much to me. And I just love her and appreciate her so much. And now I know that my voice is also my superpower, that when you hear me before you see me, I say, yes, girl, because you know the goodness is coming. <laughs> and so it makes me very happy. Um, thank you. 
to be able to know that I can trust my voice and that my voice actually changes the world. And I have now got to be on stages in a lot of places around Madison Square Garden is going to be my goal. Y'all pray for me because I'm trying to get there. But I want to use my voice for good. I want to use my voice to encourage people. I want to use my voice to inspire people that no matter what somebody tells you, whether you're neurodiverse or black or fat or anything else, don't let anybody limit who you are. Trust that you are exactly who you need to be, that you're in the space you need to be to make all the difference in the world. And that is what I want to always encourage you. There is room in this world for you to be you. Don't be anybody else. Trust yourself. Trust who you are and why you are in this place, in this place right now. So I think about little baby law when little baby law was back then. So that's little baby law and sassy law because honey, Listen, I'm wearing that hat, ain't I? Listen. <laughs> so I was thinking about what would I tell little baby law right now? I tell her, I said, I love your mind. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's creative. It's going to do things that help people feel better about themselves. I love your heart because when people need it the most, they're going to feel the love and they're going to feel the joy that you infuse inside them. And I love your voice. It is going to say powerful things that moves people's hearts and minds to make positive change for other people. So I want you to sit back and think about your childhood self. What would you tell that kid? What would you tell that kid to know that they can do anything and everything they want to do? And they have to trust and believe in themselves. So I want us all as a mantra together, we're going to say it. I trust my mind, I trust my heart, I trust my voice. Say it. I trust my mind, I trust my heart, I trust my voice. So go out there and use all three of those to make a difference in the world, and I love you all. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you.